to shift tack completely now and just go back to workforce for a moment because our great asset in the state sector is our people and we, we know they're very passionate about making a difference, making New Zealand a better, a better place. There's 57,000 of them. They're not always as engaged with the organisation as they are with the overall mission, mm -hmm. the reason they joined the service. How, what are some of the things that need to happen for us to get the best from our people, to better align personal mission with organisational and, and service missions? Without a doubt, we have to be clear about, um, I guess, both from an organisation point of view, where you're going in your organisation, but how does that fit to the bigger picture? Yeah. Um, I think the other thing is we should be much more explicit with people that, um, yes, you've joined this organisation, but there are opportunities in the big wide world. Um, so uh, looking at people from the time that they come into um, the public service, for example, um, and moving people around much more flexibly, I think would be one thing. Um, and also, you know, Actually, people's experience of an organisation comes down to the quality of their line manager. So one of the things I think is we've got to invest more in um, managers and leaders um, so that um, there's a connection there between the people they're managing and, and what people are doing um, in their day job. No, I'd agree with that entirely. Oh, no, I'd agree with that entirely. Clarity of purpose, permission to act and the autonomy, and it's always helpful. And again, genuine apologies for the jargon, tight, loose, tight. Yeah. Um, backed up with, as Sandy says, some critical stuff around the training and the expectations placed around managers and future leaders. And again, that lean towards, and this is where I think the, the commission in particular is positioned around the, more, the most senior cadre of leaders, mm -hmm. around that leaning against the single institution and very natural loyalties to in fact the qualities we expect of our senior leaders demonstrate a whole load of qualities that are actually all about not being locked into a view of the world that is mediated solely through the fact, the fact of your current employment. I mean we're both probably products of, of having moved around in careers both between private and public sectors and I just think they're fantastic experiences and and I think, um, you know, if I look at people who stay in organisations for 20 or 30 years plus, yes, they may love what they do, but it doesn't necessarily build them for the leadership that we need for today. Mm. Um, many, many experiences make a great leader. They do. And, you know, you learn along the way, you make mistakes, you learn from them, you have hard times, you have good times, you know. But you also learn to operate in different environments. And we need people now, particularly leaders, who can actually traverse complexity, work across um, multiple parties, get solutions um, that are not just one party focused really. Mm -hmm.